Here we go. And blessings from RMC Studios. Welcome once again. I'm Prez Blackman. As we get into the groove that makes you want to move, Prez Graham Worldwide, where you're much better with me on than off. Stay tuned. We have an exciting guest today. Mortgage, banking, everything is going to be in full right here on Prez Graham Worldwide. Somebody you can truly depend When everybody walks away I know that you will always stay What made you love me so I don't think I'll ever know You know like nothing I felt before And you make life worth living for Like a true friend Somebody you can truly depend When everybody walks away I know that you would always stay What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs and bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer From the Endeavor, Dave Hollister, Anthony Hamilton, Dwayne Woods, super nice friend of mine, right here at Prez Graham Worldwide. I have an exciting guest today, a very exciting guest today, because a lot of you want to find out about can you get a home, can you qualify for a home. I have one of the vice presidents of Mortgage Business Development Manager, Miss Vanessa Montanez. Is am I saying that correct? Yes, you are. And welcome to Prez Graham Worldwide. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Prez. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're so kind. Are you, are you breathing now? You okay? You I'm comfortable? breathing. I'm breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Ms. Vernon Woodfox um, over at East West Bank and, of course, one of the VPs there. And I want to say to her uh, blessings, and I have Vanessa here. Listen, let's get into this um, mortgage business. Yes. Uh, how does one become a VP of uh, mortgage business development manager? Well, I had the pleasure of working at a wonderful institution. I've been in mortgage lending for the last 20 years. I live, breathe mortgages, and I really believe in the power of being a homeowner, the true American dream of homeownership. Mm. Uh, by being a homeowner, it can build wealth and just go from there. So I believe in mortgages and finding that right product for the first time home buyer or move up buyer. So mortgages is what I really love and I like to share with my knowledge and empower others to join on that. Wow. Have you all said all of that? Yes. I'm excited now. <laughs> How does one qualify for a home or can one get a home? Uh, is it hard? So the most important thing that all lenders look at is credit, capacity, and collateral. Okay. How is your credit? Are you really making your payments on time? You don't want to have late payments. You don't want to overextend yourself and you want to have a good track record. We also want to make uh, capacity. 
are you working? Do you have a good job, paying job? Uh, do you have money saved as well? And then lastly, we look at collateral. All banks look at what is the quality of this house? Is it a move-in house? Does it meet all the standards for a family to live in that house? So that's the basic premise of buying a home. So you need to save your money, look for the right home, and work with the right lender. What if you have money, and yes. at the same token, um, you have uh, good credit, but you've had maybe uh, you know a glitch somewhere down the road? Will that hurt you? No, it won't, but you do have to have a proven track record. So we have families that have had bankruptcies or they've had a short sale. You can go ahead and reestablish your credit. There are many institutions and many programs that will allow you after two years to go back into the home ownership or one year. It all depends on that lender that you're working with. And at East West Bank, the bank that I work for, we have different programs to meet different capacities uh, for those that are credit challenged. So. When you say answer. credit challenge, that yes. means uh, like Kevin and I, we have bad credit. <laughs> we have American Express and all the other credit because we have bad credit. Yes. <laughs> no, all the serious business. Can they qualify uh, having a co-signer? You can. But, again, we have to get that story right. So if you're looking to buy a house, mm -hmm. you need to work with the lender that's going to understand who you are, where you've lived and worked the last few years, and really look at... What happened to that credit? Was it an extenuating circ circumstance? Did you lose your job? Um, was there a death? W what is the story? What happened to your credit? If it's financial mismanagement or you just forgot about it, then you need to get back on track. So you have that proven track record because remember, buying a house is going to be one of the largest investments of your life. So true. And you really want to make that mortgage payment on time. So we want to make sure that as somebody who's going to be a homeowner that you understand the importance of credit. Mm. Yeah. How does East Wink West Bank uh, differ from other banks? Well, one, we have our own portfolio lending that really um, looks at that client for the last year and where they've lived and worked. Um, and then we have our traditional programs, such as the Fannie Mae Home Ready, which is a wonderful product that requires as little as 3% down for a first-time home buyer or move-up buyer. So we have an array of programs available. Uh, with East West Bank, but again, every family is so different that mm -hmm. what we want to do is make sure that I get your story straight where what is the best program for you and then offer offer you the programs that we have available. So having a variety of programs mean that you can almost put anyone in a home? Yes, if they qualify and if they're ready. Because sometimes that borrower may not be ready just right now, but maybe in six months or a year from now. Um, so it all depends on that family or that individual. Our guest today on Transgram Worldwide, sidetracking from the music we normally play, is Ms. Vanessa Montanez, uh, who is VP of Business uh, Mortgage Business Development Manager. I want to qualify. I'm afraid. I'm new to California. I saw a piece of property that I want. Yes. Okay, I've had several banks to turn me down. Why would I come to East West Bank? Because we're able to think outside the box and look at programs that are not standard. For example, we have our Bridge to Home Loan program that's fantastic because we're able to help families that have no social securities, that have uh, challenges with credit, um, also that are foreign nationals. So we're able to go ahead and help them on that if they have a large down payment or can get a gift. So we have things that are beyond standard uh, programs that other banks don't won't even offer it. So we, we're able to offer it based on our own portfolio lending. And we service our own loans, which is great. So you're always going to be working with the same institution. You're going to be making the payment to the same institution. And really, we are a regional bank with great service. I'm in the community. Say, for instance, I'm in South Central Los Angeles. Yes. In the community. OK, I've been in the community. I'm in an apartment. been paying rent all my life. I want to come out of the apartment. But I don't really think about East West Bank. Where do you come in? Well, our story is a great story to tell. Believe it or not, we're actually from California and from downtown LA. So we live, we know the community. We're a regional bank with strong ties to the community. So the story of East West Bank, it started in 1973, 43 years ago, out of downtown Chinatown. Mm. And really, it is not a Chinese bank. It's a Chinese American bank and what started for the community. So a lot of the immigrant population w wasn't able to open up a savings or checking account, and they had credit challenges. 
So with East West Bank, what we were able to do is launch our first bank out of Chinatown, and then our second branch actually grew into Montebello. So we really understand the community. We have deep ties to the community, which is fantastic. So that family that lives in South Central or South LA, we understand we're from here and we understand the community needs. So give us an opportunity and we will go from there. Will they be challenged by uh, many other uh, managers? I come to you, I call Vanessa. Vanessa, this is what I want. Yes. Okay, now you won't turn me over to like seven different other people, will you? No, so I have a team of professional business development officers. They've been tied to the community. The average uh, mortgage business development officer that works on my team has 10 years of experience. So they understand the complexities of a mortgage and the challenges of families. So we all have experience and this is what we do full time. So. so you're able to help us? Yes, we are. And if we're not, we will be able to work with you to uh, give you a plan in place and also work with nonprofits that we're partnered with in helping you get more financial literacy or first time home buying education, whatever it's going to take for you to become a homeowner if you're willing and able. When you say nonprofit agencies, yes. define that for us. So uh, there are HUD approved agencies that help homeowners become homeowners. Um, they have no ideas like, oh my God, what do I do? Nonprofits out there are able to educate you and give you the tools that you need to buy a house. They'll give you an eight hour course on the importance of buying a home, the importance of savings, and, and uh, give you an A through Z process with a nonprofit. They're also gonna look at your credit analysis and say, okay, we have some challenges, you're definitely on that road, and here's how we're gonna help you get there. So the path for home ownership. All right, what are the advantages of owning a home versus staying in an apartment? Oh, there are several advantages. <laughs> um, the first advantage is definitely tax benefits. Okay. On your income tax, you're able to write off that interest, which in turn is more money hopefully back to you at the end of when you file your taxes. The second thing is that equity. If you're able to buy a house and live there, you're gonna be able to build that equity, and when you sell it, there's actual income tied to that, and as a renter, you're never gonna have that equity. Mm -hmm. But there's some challenges being a homeowner because guess what? You might be living at Home Depot in case you, uh, you know, your light bulb goes out. You're not going to be able to call your landlord. So little challenges that come up. Um, definitely a leak, like let's say one of your washers uh, from your sink goes off. You have to fix it. So you definitely have some challenges as a homeowner, responsibilities. But really the pluses are homeowners, it's the American dream you build up your equity. From that, you can leverage and buy other properties as well. You can help finance college education. So it's a proven fact that when families buy a home, it builds communities, safer neighborhoods, children go and get a college education and finish high schools. So There's just, it's a much better uh, community overall and less crime as well. Wow. East West Bank, yes. they are established enough to handle any situation, am I correct? Yes, well, on top of that we're 43 years old, we actually have $32.4 billion in assets as of 2015. We have over 130 branches all across the United States. We're in seven states, and we also have a presence in China. We have branches out there. So how um, East West Bank, it's really the bridge, the financial bridge between the East and the West. I love it. In case you have uh, questions for Vanessa, the phone number here is 323-965-1600. 965-1600-323. Miss Vanessa uh, Montanez, uh, VP, Mortgage Business Development Manager. Now, in South Central Los Angeles, there are no branches of East West Bank. We do have uh, branches in San Pedro. We have branches in downtown Los Angeles. And I believe there's one, I would have to give you the list, but we do have branches in the area. Really? Yes. Because when, when I say South Central, I mean like in the hood, as they like to refer it to, <laughs> uh, Broadway, Manchester, San Pedro, uh, the streets, uh, uh, Avalon, El Segundo. I know we have one for sure in San Pedro, Torrance, Artesia, um, and also downtown. 
we have several branches. I can give you more of, uh, okay. I can actually give you the, the entire list today. To get the home that I've been dreaming of. Yes. Okay. I don't have a lot of money. Is there a program to help me? I have a little money saved, but I want that certain home. Can I come to East West Bank as a partner uh, to help me or to say, uh, this is what you need to do? The answer is yes. So Fannie Mae actually launched a wonderful product called the Home Ready. Okay, let me interject. What is a Fannie Mae for those listeners and those that's watching us right now? So Fannie Mae is a secondary market. Uh, they do lending and us uh, banks sell loans to Fannie Mae okay. on the secondary market. So they oversee. They came with a product last month, December 14th, for first-time home buyers called the Home Ready product. What's great about this particular product, it's very similar to an FHA that requires 3.5% down payment. Instead of 3.5%, Fannie Mae is like, oh, wait a minute, we could do a product very similar but with 3% down. So the actual buyer can go as little as 3% down and buy their first time home, which is fantastic. There are income restrictions. There's also gonna be a um, uh, first time home buying class that's gonna be required. But when you're working with the right lender that does this product, we can go ahead and see if you qualify for that prez. So it's a fantastic alternative mm. to buying a house. In addition, the 3% down can be a gift. And one of the great things about East West Bank commitment to home ownership is we've actually launched a new down payment assistance program called the REACH, where we're actually awarding one to 2% up to $5,000 grant for a first time home buyer. They have to live in the property for a year. There are restrictions. They have to get approved with the Fannie Mae Home Ready, but that's just one more tool that we can help be a first time home buyer. You're going to pay me to honestly come to you to get a home? I'm not gonna pay you. <laughs> We're gonna grant you okay. a $5,000 grant for you to live in your property for a year, but wow. we have some restrictions, so that's why you need to work with a great team such as us at East West Bank that can help you be Kevin, there. could you help me out on this here? Okay, well, now I'm concerned the $5,000 grant. Correct. Wow, I got this grant, I got this loan, I get laid off, then what do I do then? Well, with this Fannie Mae Home Ready product, if you get laid off, we also have mortgage insurance that will cover you up to six months of payment if you're unemployed. So there's a lot of great benefits working with the Home Ready product. Okay, we have so, a caller. All right, caller, you're on the line. Yes, hi, I have a question for Ms. Vanessa. Okay. I am a um, first time buyer and I am self-employed. Okay, what programs are out there to help me get qualified? She's a first-time buyer, so she's self-employed. And what kind of program do you have out there to help her in that situation? Okay. All right, she's going to answer that for you. Call her. Just hang on a second. Okay, uh, thank you. All right, so for first-time home buyer, when you're self-employed, what we do is we're going to be looking at your tax returns, all your schedules. I'm sorry. All right, I'm sorry, I had to put on my headset now. <laughs> Didn't want to mess your hair up. <laughs> so the question is, your first time home buyer, what I'm gonna look at is your tax returns, what you're reporting. I'm also gonna look at your different schedules. I'm gonna look for a year-to-date profit and loss of what you did last year in 2015 and work with your tax advisor to make sure what kind of income that we're able to use to qualify you. Okay. Now, while, while she's on the line, uh, now, would that $5,000 grant come into place? If she qualifies, absolutely. Okay, okay. Wow, that's amazing. All right, Carl, you have any other questions? Yes, is it better to be um, pre-approved before, before getting qualified? But is it better to be pre-approved yes. for the home loan, so for the um, amount? You definitely want to get pre-qualified before you start looking for a house and you want to work with a lender that's going to understand your your background and give you this is the maximum that you qualify and this is the range because you want to be living within your means and have still your lifestyle and you can get those quotes working with one of our representatives at east west bank or any institution for that matter 
Okay, is it a number you have for um, East West Saints that I can contact you? Absolutely. So you can call us at our toll-free number, 1-800-562-6392, or you can visit our website also at www.eastwestbank.com. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for your time. You're welcome, and Thank good you, luck. and I'll be seeing you. Please do. All Thank right, Carla, thank you so kindly. Now, on that on that $5,000 grant, I'm concerned about that. I mean, I love it. Yes. Uh, that will help anyone, I think, huh? It's going to help a lot of homeowners, yes. Wow, wow. And how long and has that been around? We're launching it next month. Oh, really? So this is new? This is a brand new, brand new down payment assistance, but that's the commitment East West Bank has to its community and to homeownership. Wow, our guest today, uh, talking about homes, getting into a homes. You don't have to stay in an apartment now. I wish they had that when I was coming along. Wow, unbelievable. Let me ask you a question. On um, VA, okay, um, I've got approved from the VA. Would I need that to come to you, or how does that work? So the VA is a wonderful product as well, the Veterans Administration. We do not offer that at East West Bank, but okay. other institutions do. Okay. So what the great thing about being a veteran and serving your country is you could buy with 0% down, which is fantastic. You need your letter of eligibility. You need to work with a lender that can do the VA, but you could put 0% down and buy your house as long as you qualify, and there's no mortgage insurance. So really, it is a benefit to our men and women in service. So it's wow. a great product. I'm concerned, again, uh, for our, my listeners and of course my people out there, this new program, are you the only one that have this new program going? With the Fannie Mae Home Ready, no. It's across the U.S. It's with different banks and institutions as well that are offering it with Fannie Mae. So it's not exclusive to East West Bank, but definitely it's a great product overall. Does this apply to businesses as well? This is for residential lending, so the person would have to live in the property one to four units. Okay. Yeah, so not for businesses. So East West Bank is the bank then? It is the bank, <laughs> it, especially because it's here local. Okay. I, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, so I really am at home at East West Bank. Really? Yes. Coming to Los Angeles from another state, okay. Uh, my job transferred me here, but I want property right away. I come to you. What do you do for me? I'm going to ask you, do you have the letter of employment of your transfer? And we're going to go ahead and work with, just because you're moving from one state to the other, let's say from Texas to Los Angeles, that's not going to stop you from buying a house. We're going to get you pre-qualified. I'm going to ask you where exactly you want to live, and we're going to partner you up with a white realtor. Amazing, Miss Vanessa Montanez, VP, uh, uh, Mortgage Business Development Manager, uh, with information on how you can get out of an apartment into a house or a home and give us all the programs or a few of the programs that you have that will help our listeners for those just tuning in. Such programs that you have that can you know help us to get out there and get out of the apartment. So the one that I really like is our Fannie Mae Home Ready, okay. the 3% down. So with as little as 3% down, you could buy your first home, a condo or a house with 3%, which opens up the doors to a lot more people. Then we have our regular purchase with 20% down, which not everybody has 20%, but we offer that as well. And then we have our bridge to home loan, which is our portfolio lending for those that have a little bit more credit challenges or are self-employed and we really can't use that much tax returns because maybe we didn't report it or we have a lot of businesses. Whatever the reason is, we have a bridge to home loan, which is a wonderful product as well, and that requires 40% down. Um, we have home equity lines of credit as well, where we're gonna look at your assets and qualify you based on assets, and it's fantastic as well. So we have just about every product for every kind of borrower out there. Share with the listeners how they like contact you and your team. So the first place to go to is our website at www.eastwestbank.com. Okay. Then we have a toll-free number where they can call us as well at 1-800-6, I'm sorry, 562-6392. Or they can call my cell phone or they can definitely get in, in contact with my team. 
Did you give your cell phone number out? Yes, my personal cell phone is 626-672-6922. For those of you that might want to contact Vanessa right now, she's in the studios, 323-965-1600. 323-965-1600. This is a remarkable piece. East West Bank. I want to move all of my, I've been with um, uh, the B Bank and I've been with all the other banks. So therefore, convince me to move my business over to East West. Goodness, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> so I personally opened up my savings account because I'm all about the interest rate and the service. And our interest rates are very competitive and slightly higher than the average, which was great. In addition, um, I live in Pasadena, so I was able to open up my account right where I work, which was fantastic. And the service is like no other. It's really? a great service. They know you by first name sometimes, and you just feel at home. It's a wonderful institution. I've worked with all the big banks, and they're all wonderful. I'm not going to say don't, but give us a try. You will be very happy with the services that we provide, both from a banking perspective to commercial lending to residential lending, which is my expertise. Just the service all around is great. So you're telling me that East West Bank is that more personable bank that I need to come to, as yes. opposed to uh, uh, the BHs and uh, the Malibus, et cetera, and so forth, because I'm going to feel very at home, very comfortable. I'm going to walk through the door, then, hello, Prez, how are you, blah, 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 or Mr. Blackman, or yeah. uh, Mrs. Montanez, whatever the case might be, <laughs> correct? Yes, we are a regional bank with community ties, so it's just a wonderful bank overall with great service. So impressive. Thank so you. impressive that East West Bank, a bank that most of us has never heard of, how do they treat minorities? Well, that's a great question because I personally am a minority and we believe in diversity. So that's mm. one of our pillars is diversity, financial literacy, working with the community overall. Um, East West Bank has actually had a partnership with the United Way Greater Los Angeles over 20 years. So they understand the community. Mm. They also have a partnership with the LA Lakers. Really? Yes. So they go out Clippers. Of what about the Clippers? <laughs> <laughs> Clippers would be next, though. I don't know. But it stems from our CEO, Dominic Ning, all the way down to our management and our staff. Everybody just embodies great service overall and a, f a family atmosphere, So, which is really important. Really? Yes. Especially in our team, on our mortgage team, I couldn't be more blessed to work with amazing colleagues and a great manager as well. Really? Yes. Well, I'll send shouts out to Miss Verna Woodfox. I want to thank her so very kindly yes. for this uh, moment here of having you here uh, with us uh, and having your expertise. You're so young to be in mortgage and know all of this business. Bless you, Prez. I really <laughs> like you. I just have really good genes. <laughs> But thank you. So now, all of your friends, do you encourage them to come to East West Bank? Yes. Uh, really? I'm a phone call away. They ask me questions. Should I refinance? Should I buy? And the answer is usually yes, because if it makes sense for them and it's the right benefit, you're always going to do what's in the best interest of someone. Um, but I can't express how important it is, home ownership and how it can give you that security that you need when you retire, because... There's nothing more important than home ownership because you could build your wealth this way. I'm living proof of it. Uh, yes, you could do the stock market. Yes, you can be a hedge fund manager. But really, real estate, that's how most us minorities are able to get into building wealth in America. An old block saying uh, years ago said, so there's nothing like being in California and owning dirt. Yes. And I sort of believe that. You know, owning dirt is very important here in this state. Because the gold rush is gone now, and so property is the key. Property will continue to appreciate. So, as long as we keep appreciating, we're, we're going to be good. Really? Yes. I want to ask you another question before we wrap this interview up. For those listeners that are watching us right now that have been concerned over the years, interest rates going up and down, up and down, up and down. Where does East West Bank start and where do they stand with that? So we follow the markets just like everyone else. Unfortunately, if we had that crystal ball, we would be in a different predicament. Mm -hmm. But interest rates are at an all-time low. 
will they rise? Yes, they're going to rise eventually, but you can't ha have that stop you. Mm -hmm. You can't because interest rates historically have been an average of eight and a half percent. Now we're in the low, you know, in the threes, four percent. It's still a great time to buy. It's still your buying power to buy a house with great interest rates. It's unheard of. So you don't want to let that stop you from being a homeowner because no matter what, if you get in a predicament, you can always sell that house. Mm. Define for us, before we go, fixed rate as opposed to non-fixed rate. So the fixed rate, that payment will never change. So if you do a 30-year mortgage, your principal and interest will always remain the same for the next 30 years. On an adjustable, that adjustable can change depending if it's going to be a fixed adjustable for one year, three years, five years, or 10, you'll have that security of knowing that it's going to be fixed for that amount of time and then it will be adjusting. And it can adjust depending on what the interest rates are doing at that time and what kind of index it's tied to. So at East West Bank, we do have adjustable products and it's tied to our treasury. So whatever happens to the treasury, it will affect but it's a very conservative index. So it all depends on the, that buyer. How long are they gonna live in that home? And what makes sense to them? If this is gonna be their permanent home, you definitely wanna go on a traditional 30-year fixed route. But if it's one of the move-up buyers or the person who just transferred from Texas that it's really gonna live in the property for five years, you might wanna look at a five-year fixed adjustable or a seven-year fixed adjustable because the interest rates will be cheaper. It'll mm. be lower. Mm. So it all depends on that that borrower. Speaking from a non-professional, a non-VP standpoint. Yes. First time home buyer, what would you recommend? I don't know anything about buying a house. I've never bought a house before. I've never had a house before. What would you recommend to that person for the first time? Home so buyer? overall, I am very conservative when it comes to my finances, and I do the 30-year fixed mortgage. Why? Because I want peace of mind. Because believe it or not, years just go in a blink of an eye. Before you know it, you've had that house more than five years. You want to have that security of knowing that your payment will not go up and down and have a 30-year fixed mortgage. Amazing, amazing, amazing information. So now you have no excuse to stay in an apartment. You can call Vanessa. Give your information again, please. So my personal cell phone is area code 626 Six seven two six nine two two. Once again, that's six two six six seven two six nine two two. If I don't pick up that call, I will call you back within that same day and connect you with my right team member. If not, I will also help you. Our guest today. Would you like to have anything else before we share this and close this interview out? I'd like to personally thank Verna Woodcox, my wonderful Fox, colleague. Wood Fox, Wood Fox. Wood Fox. Yes. My, my colleague, and also Prez for having this opportunity. Oh, you're so kind. Anytime we can be of a blessing to the community, and we encourage uh, business personnel to come and share information such as yours, because I, I'm still ringing in my head uh, on both sides of my ears, other than the headset, this $5,000 <laughs> grant. I mean, I'm, I've never heard of such. There are institutions and cities that offer grants as well. We're just one of others trying to do the right thing and bring in more home ownership. But they keep it quiet because uh, years ago, I mean, I, I'd never heard of such uh, a $5,000 grant to help me do this or that. You know, why is that? Well, because a lot of cities want to have also more homeowners. So sit, different cities and municipalities will have first-time home buying programs, and you can definitely Find that information by looking at your city's website. Amazing. Our guest today on Prayersgram has been the lovely and talented uh, VP of Mortgage Business Development Manager, Miss Va this Miss Vanessa Martinez. And I am so excited about this $5,000 grant. I don't know what to do. In the meantime, I'm Prayers Blackman. Blessings to you here on RMC as we show love. Remembering our young brother and friend who was just passed away on this Monday, and that is uh, JJ. We will miss him. Uh, Murray. Uh, a victim of uh, violent crime and we say to his family earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal in behalf of prayers ground want to send shouts out to Reverend Eddie Lane and of course to the New Mount Zion family and of course to Miss Deborah Murray and the family and we say to you keep looking to the hills which cometh your help here's one of Vernon's favorite girls right here here's the lovely and talented Miss Candy Staten right here on prayers ground
She'll stand by him no matter what. And the tears start over again. Lord, help me to know the love in, in the, the tears, tears that mama cried. Too, too deep for explanation. It's too, too strong. strong to You'll never understand too it. To no, no. She'll go that extra mile. Lord, help me to know help the love. Me to know the love. Remember, J.J. Murray, super nice, talented young man. Life cut too short. And we just want to say to the family, be blessed. Be encouraged. The Lord makes no mistakes. Candy Staten, right here on Prayer's Ground. RMC Studios, missing J.J. Murray. On the station that cares, that mama cried. Join us Sunday mornings on the Pasadena station there, K-A-L-I, yeah, 8 to 9 Sunday morning with great gospel music. We got much more for you. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Here's Joseph on the station that gives you great gospel music. R-M-C. put your hand together. I'll ask a question here. Yeah. I want you to tell me the truth. I want to know something.
On the station that gives you great gospel music, Jola Gunn, mighty, mighty clouds of joy from the latest endeavor, moving right here. RMC Studios with me, prayers be blessings to you on this wonderful Lord's Day. I believe, I believe, without a shot of a doubt, I believe this is the last Friday in January. Can you believe that January is out of here come Sunday? It's all over. Yeah, no doubt about it. But God is good, and we just want to send shouts out to uh, J.J. Murray, young, talented brother. And let me just say this, America, brothers and sisters, too young, 17, too young to leave here. It tears my heart apart, having served my country, and then to watch this young brother a member of the New Mount Zion Baptist Church, where Dr. James T. Tolson is the pastor. Miss Tina Trigsby, she makes things happen. Mama Day Washington, Ted Top Barber, and matter, matter of fact, the choir's annual day is Sunday. Yeah, super nice at 4 o'clock, 8400 South Broadway. But this young brother here sang on prayers Black Men's Day. You've seen that several of my concerts, and he's out of here. This past Monday, I want to thank Reverend Eddie Lane for breaking the sad news to us, and we shall miss this young brother. And let me just say this to all of you that might know him, uh, knew him, and had something to do with his demise. There is a word between Genesis and Revelation in the 66th book. In matter of fact, to be more specific, between Matthews and Revelation in the 10th book of the New Testament, that is the book of Ephesians, in the 6th chapter, it tells us children obey your parents. Then on that second verse, honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land in which we live. But then it also tells us Paul, the apostle, it says fathers, not grandmothers, not uncles, not uh, sisters and nieces and cousins, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. And then if you turn Two books over, or just skip one book, which is Philippians, which is the 11th book, and go to the 12th book, which is Colossians, and you stop by the third chapter of the book of Colossians, same New Testament, you will find third chapter, verse 20, tells us more in details about children and the parents. So, Deborah, this is for you. Please do not take it personal. But the Bible never said anything about grandmothers raise your children, parents. Mothers and fathers, more says fathers and mothers. It is your responsibility. And for those of you that had something to do with this killing, there is a word for you between Genesis and Revelation. The Apostle Paul penned in the book of Colossians, the third chapter, verse 25. Those of you that did wrong, you will be repaid for the wrong that you've done. From all of us here at Prayers Graham, got another exciting, great guest coming up. The number one artist in this world on his way to the city. Super nice. Here is Lee Williams and the Spiritual QCs getting ready for us June the 12th, 5 p.m. Carson Community Center. It's a Prayers Graham presentation. The number one artist in the world for you, you, and especially you. That is Evelyn Brown for you. Sherry Winborn for you. Super nice. Here's Lee Williams. Let's have a good all we gotta do is get cheese. Gotta get cheese. Listen to everybody. We gotta get it with one. Jesus will be there. You can count on the law. Thank Him because you don't. Praise Him because you Come on, let's have them. Come on, let's have them. I wonder when I say it again. Come on. Children, let's have a good time. All we gotta do is get cheese. Gotta get cheese. 
It ain't got nothing to say But if I were you I wouldn't cheat myself If they don't wanna go We can't wait for nobody else Thank him because you do Praise him because you But come on, let's have him But come on and let's have him I wonder could I say it again Come on, children, let's have them All we gotta do is get cheese Gotta get cheese Listen to everybody We gotta get with one call Jesus will read You can count on the law Thank him because you do Praise him because you Come on, let's have them Come on, let's have them I got one more thing I want to tell you Somebody here Sitting here today Who won't do nothing And ain't got nothing to say But if I were you I would cheat myself If they don't want to go We can't wait for nobody because you do Praise him because you You come on, let's have him You come on, let's have him You come on, let's have him Come on, let's have him I wanna ask you one more thing I wanna ask you one more thing Did you come here to have him? Did you come here to have him? Do you really wanna have him? Do you really wanna you know you can have them. Do you know you can have them? God wants you to have them. 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 Now if you really want to have them, and you came here to have them, and you know you can have them, and you really want to have them, you want to turn around and tell somebody, turn around. Somebody, come on, come on, let's have a good Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's have a good Come on, let's have a good Well, how many came here to have a Well, how many came here to have a Well, how many really wants to have a Well, how many really wants to have a Well, how many know you can have a well, how many know you can have them? God wants you to have them. 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 If you really want to have them, and you came here to have them, and you know you can have them, and you really want to have them, turn around and tell somebody. Turn around.
the number one artist in the world. Lee Williams and the Spiritual QC is getting ready for us. No doubt about it. It's going to be nice. I am Prez Blackman, and you know that auto rang. Hey, you know that automatically, don't you? I'm excited. You've seen him on TV. You've seen him in various productions. And I have in my studios today another talented superstar. One that I pray he brought us the blessing plan today. <laughs> You see him on the California Lottery uh, promotion, uh, just showing off uh, Donna Board's uh, beauty shop. Donna, blessings to you. Hope you feel better. And I hope you see him in the snow of balls, in the red ball. Actor, superstar, Mr. P.L. Brown. Blessings to you, sir. Well, thank you. And welcome to Prez Graham. Well, good to be here. Now, I don't know if it's good or not. First of all, did you bring <laughs> us the combination to winning the lottery? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, you know, we see you on the California lottery. You understand? Uh, listen, tell us the secret. We won't tell nobody else. Just tell us the secret. Okay, well, the secret is... <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> Almost. Okay, all right. T.L. <laughs> Brown is here today. Kevin said you guys are related. Matter of fact, uh, I got Browns name. in my family, too. So listen, tell me, man. Tell the listeners. Uh, first of all, how'd you get on that lottery spot? Just uh, audition for it. Really? Yeah, I've, I've been doing commercials for a number of years. And you got and a lot uh, of projects to get credit. Yeah, yeah. Been, oh, my God, Been man. in this business for over 30 years. So. No kidding. From uh, Broadway to national tours to Grand Opera. You know, from Seattle Opera to, you know, just all around the country, Hong Kong, Philharmonic. So I've been pretty busy. No kidding. But did yes. you bring us the secret to the lottery? That's what I you need know, to know. I don't know the secret to the lottery. Really? To tell you the truth, I don't. I'm you're, trying to figure it out myself. You're kidding. No, but you know, there was something amazing. The last winning, uh, the president's birthday and the girl's birthdays were the last the lo last lottery number for that big one and a half billion dollar win. Are you serious? Yes. Somebody came out with numerology and it was their birthdays that were the final numbers in that big drawing. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, my brother. Brother, come I, I tell on, the man. I brother, he's got something going out. <laughs> he's got something going out. He, he's got the power behind him. Wow. So listen, tell us, tell the people, uh, P.L. Brown, uh, give them, you got the projects, you got the projects coming up, right? Yes, we have the yeah. uh, coming, well, February 2nd, the People vs. O.J. Right, Simpson. Right, 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 uh, right. It's going to be on FX, uh, 10 episodes, and I play one of the main jurors in that. Really? Yes, yes, so that's going to be exciting, one of the biggest uh, projects FX has done. Uh, to date, so that should be pretty exciting. You know, the people versus OJ, you know, that's how do you think that's going to work? You know, because we went through a metamorphosis uh, during that trial period, right? And, um, you know, now that there's no more Chris Darden, right. there's no more JC, and uh, do you honestly think? that it will open up a new can of worms? You know, I don't know if it will, but I, I know it piques people's interest, you know, to always revisit these stories in some kind of way because there are a lot of people that said he was guilty, a lot of people said he was innocent, but there's only one person that knows. Really? And I don't think he knows. So, really, really, exactly, so, exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, so it's kind of crazy. <laughs> As you handling your acting role um, in this... Uh, do you think, um, well, first of all, uh, O.J. is O.J., yep. okay? And hopefully they would let this start, you know, just go down as it's over. But, you know, when you keep rehashing this, right. and then you get youngsters that's coming up, you understand there were babies then that have that mentality of out there, you know, I'm, I'm praying it doesn't stir up any, any confusion in our city. Well, I, I hope not. And I don't think it will. Really? You know, it's just I, for purely for entertainment purposes. And, uh, you know, if somebody decides they want to do something crazy, I don't think, you know, the production would have anything to uh, do with that because people have a tendency to do whatever they want to do anyway. So, really? so we can't blame them if they decide to go off on the deep end. So as a juror on The People versus O.J., they're all kind of advertising. Mm. Uh, are you going to tell them how to win the lottery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they can send in one dollar to, to this post office box, <laughs> and I'll give them the secret. 
<laughs> oh my God, P. L. Brown is here today. Oh my! When you first did that lottery piece, how did you feel? Did people come up to you and say, "Hey, hey, hey, Perry, give give us the real inside scoop"? Well, they wouldn't. A lot of the vendors wouldn't let me play because they are you thought, serious? They thought I was part of the lottery. A commission. No. So I'd go in and I'd want to buy a ticket. They say, you can't buy a ticket. You work for the lottery system. And I'm said, well, not really. I'm an actor, you know, that's portraying this whole lottery thing. Oh, no, we can't sell you any tickets. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> so kidding. It, it was kind of crazy for a while. But uh, I guess they, they, they said, okay, well, I guess he doesn't work for them. So finally they uh, sold me some tickets. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 I, I guess I was acting so good. I don't know. And you do a remarkable job, matter yeah. of fact, because I, I know a lot of people are telling me this is, hey, that brother that was on there, and, he, and then I come in here, and then here you are one day, I'm saying like, and I call him right away. I said, the same brother, the lottery brother is here, right? He said, no way. So the lottery brother is here. He said, prayers, get him, prayers. blessings. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to young actors and actors and actresses that have seen you in various productions and on stage what would you say to them to about their craft and they want to be like you? Well, they first of all they had to be like themselves mm -hmm. and uh, secondly, it's just a thing of just really dedicating yourself to this profession. Uh, because now we have so many people that come in this business and as you know they'll do a sex video and they'll do this and they do that have their 50 minutes of fame and the, and it just distorts what this business is all about. Okay? And the young kids shouldn't look at that as an inroad into this business. And what's the inroad is education and being dedicated to what you do and just being honest and true to yourself. And, and there are no shortcuts in this. Other people, are people, some people have taken shortcuts and they haven't lived long and haven't had long careers as a result of that. But if you want to do this for a long period of time, and you have to constantly reinvent yourself as well. Mm. Speaking of reinventing yourself, much controversy is coming up about the Oscars. Mm. What's your take on that? You know, that is something that has been going on for a while. And, you know, you really can't have uh, inclusivity into the process if you don't have, number one, black writers. Mm -hmm. And not just black writers, Asian writers, Latino writers, you know, uh, whoever they are, any nationality. And, and, and the same thing commercially, you have white writers, they write commercials, and a lot of blacks don't get cast in commercials because the writers are right, white. And then in the films, a lot of the writers are right. Right. They're not right, but they're white. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people like Will and Jada, who decided they weren't going to to uh, go to the Oscars, the sad part about them is that all the writers on their writing team are all white. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So here's Ooh. the situation <laughs> yeah, where you're trying to chastise mm -hmm. the, the Oscars for what they're not doing, but you're not doing the thing that you need to do in order to include black writers into your writing group. Mm, okay. That's so, deep. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and and I don't know why they do it that way. Why he's done his production company that way, and what it does is just telling black writers that you know we really don't feel that you can do the, what needs to be done as far as writing, which is not true, because I know a bunch of prolific black writers here in Los Angeles that will just knock the socks off of people, but everybody needs an opportunity. That's right. Okay? That's right. So. And I'm right now writing a 10-part series with my writing partner called When the Sun Goes Down. Oh, really? And Yes, yes. So that uh, we're in the process of writing that now. And uh, we're going to shoot the episode sometime later on this year. And, uh, and that's going to be a project that is totally different from a lot of the other stuff that's been out there. And you're going to come and get Melissa and Kevin and all of us here at RMC and say, hey, I want you guys as, as extras in, in my project, right? right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> when we think of uh, black actors and uh, like Sidney Poitier and uh, The Great Cause and um, Harry Belafonte mm -hmm. and, and so many great, 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 great actors, do you feel that we've gotten our proper dues as far as the Academy is concerned, you being an actor? No, no. Well, the, the Academy wasn't designed originally for the actors. Mm -hmm. It was designed for, you know, all of the studio heads when right. they were honoring each other right. in that process. So I guess they figured we could make it more entertaining by including the actors in this process and pump it up to where it is now. 
you know, but, uh, you know, there and, and there are too many well-known actors, black actors, from the Denzels to the Morgan Freemans to the, the, the uh, Samuel Jacksons, you know, the, the uh, 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 LL Cool J's and all those guys, you know, who could build a consortium themselves and open their own studios. That's true. I mean, Oprah's done it. Okay, and Tiger and uh, uh, Tyler Perry's done it, so I don't see I don't see why they don't collaborate together and open their own studios and produce their own projects and not wait on these other production companies to give them work because they're too well known and they have such a following until they could do something like that and include a lot of black writers and actors into this process so they could work more because right now we see the same. 20 black actors on TV and mm-hmm, in the movies all the mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. The same ones all the time. You know, and that's not diversity in the sense of hiring black actors because you keep act hiring the same ones all the time. That is so true. And uh, I speak uh, in the 70s when I when I first started into uh, the union. Um, I, I look back at all those days because uh, Navy it was t- totally different National Association of Broadcast Engineers and Technicians but my days at Flip Wilson show and then Sanford and all these wonderful people here and then I thought about all of the talented as you said African American you know writers that are yeah. there and they've been like shelved yeah you know yeah why are they shelved is the question you understand we, we, there's a union uh, the WGA and then there's there's a SAG after that etc and so forth but then why are the real talent and they're talented talented yes you understand yes. I mean when I say I mean real 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 talent yeah. you know do you think there will ever change you know I, I hope it will but you know the, the whole writing process the, the industry has this formula you know it has to be structured a certain way and everything that's done and written every film every TV thing that's done is structured a certain way and in, in that writing process it becomes very predictable you know now, mm. now I can look at mm. stuff and know exactly who's going to be doing this who's doing this who's doing this you know there's not that whole sense of waiting to see what's going to develop or that, that anticipation anymore. You know every three three minutes we're going to have something's going to explode. We know every every five minutes this is going to happen and this is going to happen. You know, and it just takes away from that whole intrigue of what the process is all about. On your project that you've got coming up, how would your project differ from other projects uh, that we've seen on TV and in theaters? Uh, it because it doesn't deal with this, the the whole black issue. It deals with a culture of people who deal with quilting. Mm. So, and we developed this whole process in this in this project. You know that is totally unique and totally interesting. And and I know that, and it hasn't been done at all. What we're doing, and uh, and I'm just excited. You know that uh, it's uh, coming to fruition. Are you going to do any singing? Um, not today. <laughs> Why? Well, uh, I don't see a contract here. I don't know where. No, no, no. Ma- no. Ma- Melissa's here. Ma- <laughs> Melissa is here. Melissa handles all of that. Okay, my she, agent did it. Yeah, yeah, agent, yeah. She handled. Oh, 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 is she, oh. She sleep? She's, oh, she's, she didn't handle anything. She's gone to sleep. <laughs> She's tired. Oh, my. <laughs> Our guest this afternoon, the great P.L. Boyd is uh, Brown is here. And, of course, I'm just uh, uh, elated, brother, to have you here on Prayers, Graham. Wow. I mean, this is unbelievable. And I still believe that you have a key to the lottery. I don't know why I have this belief. Huh? Okay, well, I'm going to take that from your yeah. mouth to God's ears, and I'm going to go play the number tonight. And really? then tomorrow I'm going to win, win that $96 million. And I'll come. Oh, 96? And, well, I think it is $96 million. Oh, jeez, yeah. I better get a ticket there. Yeah. What, what yeah. do you think? And then I'll say, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> As you start to put your production out, do you uh, foresee a lot of productions uh from the great uh, P.L. Brown? Yeah. I mean, I mean I've, I've done, uh, I did a, a Super Bowl commercial, right. perhaps the Super Bowl commercial uh, that uh, I wrote and uh, submitted it to the uh, uh, Doritos uh, crashed the Super Bowl a couple years ago. And that's another situation that's a bit tenuous really? uh, because mm. 
there are a lot of uh, uh, production companies that are professional production companies that do. They have, you know, all of the people and, and all of the networking to be able to do the productions. And in my initial thing, I thought it was just a thing that, you know, anybody could do, you know, who had the, the, the idea and concept of doing commercial. But then I find out it's it's more of a professionally professional mm -hmm. inclusion of writers and producers and stuff that do these commercials. And it's politics, too. Yeah, a lot of politics involved in it, yeah. This year, this yeah. year alone, a 30-second spot, 5 million. 5 million. Is that all? Yeah. Is that all? Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> PL, let me tell you. For those of you that would like to spend $5 million on this broadcast, please, right. Post Office Box 4491, Inglewood, California, 90309. And that will cover this broadcast and Sunday morning with Prez Graham in Pasadena. Post Office Box 4491, Inglewood, California, 90309. Will you employ a, a lot of African Americans in your productions? Yeah, yeah. Really? I mean, they're diversity straight across the board, you know, because, I mean, it's necessary, you know, to do that. I mean, it's not it's not going to be like, you know, 90 percent black and 10 percent white. It's just going to be very inclusive, you know, actors and people who have been in the business and probably some new faces as well, because I think we need to bring some new faces in this business. That's as well. so true. We do. Because you know, I, I see they're, they're doing all these musicals, you know, from The Wiz and everything else. And Pearly Victorious was one of the first stage productions that they did PBS to mm -hmm. see if it was feasible to do a musical. And, and I did that years ago, and uh, it worked out quite well. So now the film industry, they're pulling these productions in and doing musical productions as well. But again, we see in the black productions, they keep hiring the same yeah. R&B people, the same singers all the time to do these things. As if, again, there's only five or six singers in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Which we know is not true. No, no, okay. it's not. No, it's not. Will we be able to see you uh, any time other than... Uh the people of versus OJ? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a couple of commercials that'll be coming out soon. Comcast and Samsung uh, that'll be coming out here in the next, uh, I'd say, next two or three weeks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, during one coming out during the uh, Oscars, uh, and then uh, the other one will be coming out probably soon after that. Yeah. Where Where will you be on location when you shoot your project? It It varies. Really? It varies. Yeah. You know, once uh, I, my writer and I sit down and and figure out exactly w how we want to create this, then we'll scout around for locations and figure out exactly how it's all going to tie into the the filming process. Shoot a scene from RMC or by RMC, and of course Roscoe's. Make sure you do that. I'll okay. even throw you some chicken and waffles in there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, feed the cast. <laughs> Yeah, shoot a scene, yes. <laughs> and then I'll get Melissa, she, she'll wake up, uh -huh. and then she'll uh, want to make sure that, hey, we take care of you. We'll have her as the sleeping lady in the scene. Yeah, that's no, a good I idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Exactly, yeah, we want to hear you sing. The very thought of you, and everything you do, the little ordinary things that everyone ought to do. Hey, how about a hand? Yeah, the great P.L. Brown. Thank you. The great P.L. Brown actor and lottery man that I know you got the ticket. I know you got to win an inside well, hand. I, I, I have a, a gag order. Really? Oh, they, yeah, I'm they, sure. They, they got a gag order on me. Really? Yeah. If I disclose <laughs> it, then they're going to take my money. So I... <laughs> oh, God, our guest today on Prayers Graham. It's been an unusual Prayers Graham today. It's super nice. It's been a blessing. All these communications brought to you by Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles. That's right. Roscoe's, a place to feed your face for good, wholesome food served in a pleasant atmosphere. It's Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles. Now with seven locations to serve YOU. Watts Angeles, Manchester and Maine, Pico and Librea, Lake and Orange Grove in Pasadena, 730 Broadway in Long Beach, with the Seabird Jazz Lounge, 1514 North Gower in Hollywood, the original location since 1970. Roscoe's LAX, and then down with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck trying your luck in Orange County, it's Roscoe's Disneyland. And don't forget, while you're there, Pitbull Energy Drink. That's right, Pitbull. Attitude in the can, the best thing in the land. Try some, you'll understand. You'll see why it's in the man. You need to have a can in your hand from Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles. Open seven days, seven nights, and seven mornings. Hey, for Mr. Hudson, for Kino, Melissa, uh, for... 
Clyde and for Johnny and for Crystal and David and, and everybody at Roscoe's, Mr. Howard. And yeah, Kevin. we love you. Who else? Kevin right here. And Kevin, of course. And we ain't going to ever leave Kevin now because Kevin's our main man right here. We want you to always remember it's Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles. P.L. Brown. Yes. Now, coming up, the people versus O.J. Um, I, I, I'm stuck on that because uh, I remember that scene. I was getting off the 405 freeway. Uh, Al Collins, they passed right by me mm. on that same day. Wow. And uh, heading over to um, Rockingham. So I'll never, I'll always have that. And, of course, the late, great Johnny Cochran, we, we shared the same shoe shop down on La Brea in Inglewood, California. So now, as it ties in with you, as the people versus O.J., can you give us an inside peek? Inside peek? Yeah, like, uh, you know, will there be a Johnny Cochran scene? or? Will oh, yeah, there's a lot of Johnny Cochran scenes. Really? A lot of Kardashian scenes. A lot of, it's a, just a lot of scenes. Really? Yes, yes. So this is going to be a reproduction of, of what we saw on TV? Mm, it is, uh, uh, I think it um, will be a totally different approach, uh, more uh, dramatic approach to what we saw on TV. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And the week we can look for you. You can look for me. Yeah. I'll be there. No. No doubt. Huh. No doubt. <laughs> yes. Guilty or not guilty? <laughs> what will you be? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Well, uh, I, 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 I was. I said not guilty. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my character anyway. So. Really? Yeah. For those that's watching and that's going to see this here as uh, this broadcast is reproduced and played back, how can they find you, actors? How can they find you for inspiration, your longevity in the business? Because you can be a tool for a lot of people. Mm. Um, how can they find uh, PL and say, hey, listen, what should I do with this? What should I do with that? Hmm. Or even wanting to be in one of your productions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how can yeah. they find you? Well, they can go to uh, my email, okay. uh, uh, Perry L. Basso okay. at AOL.com, and uh, contact me through that. And Say it again? Uh, Perry L. Basso, B A S S O, okay. because I'm a Basso Profundo opera singer uh, at AOL. Mm, so, okay. uh, and they can reach me through that. And I also have a show called The Singing Soup Meister. Which is a uh, cooking show because I, I used to be a chef. So, really? Yeah. So uh, I create soup and I sit and have conversation with you know someone in reference to what's going on in their lives and stuff. And I'll sing a little something on the show as well. So, you are you gonna bring that back? Yes. Really? Yes. And they could uh, do hashtag the singing soupmeister on the web and be able to check out a couple episodes. That really? Yes. Yes. So, can we put some chicken and waffles into your? Your show? Hmm. hmm. I think we might be able to work them, and then we'll see. <laughs> In the world of acting, did you ever want to become an actor? No. Huh? no. Well, where well, are you from originally? I'm from Detroit originally. Oh, okay, Motor yeah. City. Okay, yeah. all right. You know, it's it's so it's so funny because you know I didn't want to be a singer, didn't want to be an actor. Uh, because I, my father's a PK. I'm a, I'm a PK. My father was a preacher, so I grew up. Oh, really? I grew up with my church singing in church Monday through Sunday. And <laughs> I just hated it because I was just forced to do it on a regular basis. Really? And didn't have a life. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I didn't know what was going on vocally while I was singing. I sing everybody else's part because I didn't know anything about ear training in singing. So here I am just singing the soprano part, and I'm singing whatever. Whoever's standing next to me to the right or left, I'm singing their part. I don't know. But really? I, so I just did didn't like it at all. And then uh, one day back in the uh, late 70s, this guy, Ned Wright, uh, we had an ice cream parlor in Detroit, Delicatessen, and his uh, nephew would come in, and and I'd be imitating stuff off the radio. Didn't know okay. what, some German, whatever. You know, and I used to like the Rap Patrol because the language, you know. I'm like, <laughs> okay, this is nice. So, you know, he come in, and then, you know, he asked me if I wanted to audition for Porgy and Bess at the music, at the music hall. I did. Little did I know he was associated with the production. And I started taking voice lessons with him. And one thing led to another, and uh, next thing I knew, he told me, said, you just sing, and you could travel all around the world. And I said, yeah, right. So, and I've been singing, and I've been traveling all around the world. Did your father object? Yeah, well, my father objected, my mother objected, because to them, you know, 
this opera singing or or doing Broadway, which I've done, is more is not that sacred type right. of music. More and, worldly. Yeah, music is music. <clears throat> I agree. You know, it's, it's all made with the same notes. Okay, it's just the poetry that's different in the music. You know, so whatever poetry you want to sing, that's your choice. So for the longest time, they thought that I was just out of my mind. And uh, they didn't know that I'd work like everybody else and right. get unemployment. I'd work like everybody else and I'd get pension. I'd work like, so it was just, they couldn't fathom how I was going to make a living at this. Mm. <laughs> Until they started seeing me on TV, then they're like, oh, that's my son! That's my son! <laughs> 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 oh God, Barry is too much. When we come back, we got much more for our guests. As we wrap things up today, it's been an exciting day. Here's the heir to the throne. Here's the heir apparent. Here's my son. Here's prayers too. Uh, no, no, that's not prayers. Where's prayers uh, tune at? I have prayers tune somewhere. What do I do with prayers tune? All right, I need, I need to cue this. Up. Anyway, while I'm doing that, uh, coming up, the uh, Grammys and the Oscars. Why do you think, or do you think, that more of us need to be represented? Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a good question, I know. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's just like the president. You know, mm -hmm. we need to see more of us. If our children are to aspire to do great things, then they have to see people of their color doing great things. So true. Okay. So, so true. So that's why, you know, we have to be so in included in so much other stuff. And just make our own vehicles. Mm. On top of that, you know, because it's like I said, there's too many actors out here with too much money for them not to do what they need to be doing in order to keep creating the types of stories. And 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 I'm I'm excited because I think the director of Fruitville is doing uh, a uh, piece of uh, uh, Hannibal and Masa Musa. Mm. Yeah, they're in collaboration with that right now, which is another epic, you know, that will be done at some point, and I'm excited about that. And those are the type of stories that need, it's kind of like Shaka Zulu, which was one of the first epic, black epics that were done. So we need to do more of those just as, you know, the other counterparts are doing those great epics about their stories in life as well. Come back with our guests, the great P.L. Brown. I think we all related to him today, no doubt about yes. it. Kevin and I especially. Here's the heir to the throne. Here's the heir apparent. Here's my son. Here's prayers too. You've been going through. God told me to tell you there's a blessing.
heir to the throne. Prayers too. As you wrap this day up, our guest, give us a thought, uh, Mr. Brown. A thought. Yeah. A thought to be to be true to yourself. Mm. To be honest. Mm. To be forthright. Mm. To have integrity. Mm. You know, and be a shining light for those that follow you. Wow. So if we, if we follow you to your project, tell us your latest project besides the people versus OJ. Uh, the uh, uh, well, let me see now. Where am I now? <laughs> latest project: uh, When the Sun Goes Down. <laughs> 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 oh God, it's been a great yes. day. Listen, man, anytime you want to drop by, thank you so kind. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate being here. And uh all the family of Roscoe's, we love you and we can't wait to see the people versus OJ. I think I'll go over and, and have some chicken and waffles. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> I like that. she likes that, okay? <laughs> Listen, I want to send shouts out to Miss Donna Board and her just showing off beauty uh uh, concept over there in El Segundo and Avalon. Hey, ladies, if your head's not becoming to you, you ought to be going to her. And that is just showing off with Miss Donna Board, B O A R D, 310 256 8155. If Donna can't get your head together, then you don't need hair on your head. Until then, I got to get out of here, America. Remember this. Let's give you the gift. Until Sunday morning on KALI, 900 AM in Pasadena. Until 168 hours in the future, meet us again right here on this great station, RMC with Kevin and me. It's been a great joy. Blessings to you, America. Always keep looking up. God is always looking down. What you are is God's gift to you. What you do with yourself is your gift to God. Verna, I'm Prez Blackman, East West. Thank you, Miss Vanessa, for being here. Thank you, for Mr. Brown, for you being here. Kevin and I, we love you, along with, hey, Melissa. Can we put the camera on her? No, no. Oh, God. Can we put the camera on her? Until then, I love you so much. I'll see you uh, next Friday. Hey, believe it or not, it'll be February. Don't forget, our guest, the People versus OJ, the great P.L. Brown will be there. And, of course, you'll want to be there, too. For Mr. Hudson and all of us here, remembering J.J. Murray. We send love and shouts out to his grandmama, Miss Miss Murray herself, Miss Deborah. Yeah, for you and Faye and everyone else, our prayers are with you in this bizarre time that you're going through. J.J., we love you, man. Somewhere on the other side of through. Until then, blessings.